Good afternoon. Welcome to the Lebanon Senior Center. Another afternoon up on tap for today. And today it's a little special. We're doing a little repurposing of some water bottles in two different ways. Um, all kind of uh, aligned with some gardening themes though. It is Earth Day after all, so we're trying to get ourselves connected back to the planet. Growing something is a nice way to pay homage to our uh, the earth as well as recycling you know certainly in Oregon we can leave the labels on our bottles and turn them in for um, some change that adds up pretty quickly but sometimes it's fun to repurpose those items and turn them into other things so today we are going to be looking at how to turn them into planters two different type and I have some pictures here for one more artistic version and we're going to walk through that process first. Check those out. Aren't those adorable? You can see in the picture that they've just turned the bottom of one of these two liter bottles into a cat planter. So the little nubs on the bottom look like little legs. They cut out some little ears, made some cute kitties, some kitty planters, and uh, course you're not stuck with cats you know pigs bunnies there's a frog on the end there you can get a little bit more exotic with a panda probably one of my favorites you know of course you can also add some embellishments they use some googly eyes and buttons to make their cats and that little dinosaur just a little bit more quirky so we're going to show you the basics and of course you can certainly uh, take this idea and go running along with it. Don't even have to be animals. You can certainly turn them into whatever flight of fancy you have. And uh, on the bonus video, I'm going to show you how to turn a two liter bottle into a self-watering planter. We've done that several times here at the center and folks always seem to be intrigued. So we will do it again. All right, and when it comes to bottles and materials you'll need, um, I kind of like the two liter bottle, but of course you can pick any bottle you like that you may use around your house. Uh, it just needs to be something that you can cut through fairly easily. And the two liter bottles or this one liter bottle, you know, they're not super thick plastic, so we can cut through them fairly easily. And uh, after they were emptied out, I took off the label and I rinsed it out with a little soap and water just so it wasn't going to be sticky. Now, as you can see, some of the labeling likes to stick on there. Um, there's ways to get labels off of things. You can use, um, you know, just touch it into some boiling water a little bit or sit there and scrape and scrape and scrape to get it off. I wasn't going to worry about it too much because um, hopefully the plant will overflow and cover it a little bit. And after I cut it down to the size I want, you know, there won't be a whole bunch of it. And I just plan on putting it in the back. There you go. So we'll use that. They recommend if you to draw the shape you want, maybe a dry erase marker, because um, then you can use a little alcohol or an alcohol wipe um, to wipe that dry erase marker right back off, and then you won't see it anymore. And of course, a good pair of scissors to cut out the shape. If you're gonna paint it, obviously, if you're doing a cute critter, or to add a little zhuzh to it, you'll want some paint. So I've got a selection of paint brushes, some paper towels. I'm using a paper plate that can um, be tossed out after I use it as a palette. And then I've got some paints as well to choose from. The last item I have up are some Sharpies. So if you want to paint on details, you can. If you don't trust yourself enough with the paint, can certainly draw on some eyelashes or whiskers with a little bit of Sharpie action too. Okay, so to get started, <laughs> I'm gonna kind of, I'm just bracing my arm on the table and I'm just gonna kind of make, maybe make a line that's gonna be kind of the same diameter same height, the diameter around my container. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to add 
And your lines don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be something because in reality, you want them to kind of disappear in the end. So I'm just doing these really faint lines, just trying to make my ears match a little bit. So that's what I was doing. I was adding just a little bit of ears. Ha, ah, keeping this little piece lets me, uh, where the label didn't want to come off, I'm just going to end up turning it into the shape that I need for a tail. All right. <clears throat> and I don't even think you can see it. It's really, really, really faint. Um, you can, tr if you use a Sharpie, just be warned that it will stay there. So you, whatever you paint color you want, it'll want to be darker than the Sharpie. And also you might see through and see those Sharpie lines. So that's why I was doing it with a dry erase marker. And now the hardest part of the whole process. All right. And so, of course, if you make sure you use, uh, usually a pair of scissors has one side that's a little pointier. So definitely make sure you use that one to do this as well. The one that's a, a little bit more blunter doesn't work as well. Um, if you've already thrown away the cap, I'm using the palm of my hand to kind of create a little uh, stop to let the air out. And that did help finally get the scissors punctured into. Um, and because it's kind of a bit of a rough cut to begin, I'm actually cutting a, above my line just a little bit, just so I can get the scissors in and get it going. And I'm not even going to go for cutting out the exact shape I drew. I'm just kind of roughly cutting around it taking off this top piece, uh, there we go, that I'm not going to be using for this particular project. All right. So now I can come back and refine it because when you, it's kind of rough, you can get some of these edges that are really sharp and pokey. So now that I have a little more control and I don't have a lot of excess plastic in my way, I'm just going to come back. Now I'm going to find the lines that I drew to create my pattern. Just do a little bit more controlled cut. So I have cleaner edges. And it's hard to make sharper turns with the plastic. It's not very forgiving. So if you need to, you know, just cut off a portion. And then you can, sometimes it helps to come back from the other side and work the other way. Which is sort of what I'm doing right now, maybe. I lost my line for a moment. There it is. And I realize this is going to be a little bit hard for you to see on camera what the shape is supposed to be until it gets painted. So this particular one is kind of might take a little bit on a brontosaurus shape or maybe Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> and I'll even cut down from the inside just because... It's a more comfortable way for me to hold my uh, scissors. Seems to want to work with me a little bit better. So it's kind of one of those trial and error things. Try to find the angle working with the plastic that's safest on your hands and also lets you cut clean lines and not have a lot of jagged spots. All right.
There we go. We've got one side a little bit lower than the other, but I'm going to work with it. I'm just going to say he's looking over his shoulder. <clears throat> nope, that didn't help either. I was going to try to find some contrast for you to kind of see this shape, but there. So he's kind of cut down. You can kind of see that. I also have one over here that's more of the cat shape that's got the pokey ears on it. Um, so once again, after you get your shapes cut out, or heck, if you don't want a shape and you just want to do, um, cut it in half and just keep it as a half of a, you know, it won't have this part, it would just have this even side to it. You can certainly do that and decorate it in all kinds of ways. And again, you can do the same thing with a, a smaller bottle if you wish, just remember you have to have a bit of a smaller plant in them. So after you get it cut out comes the fun part of painting. I think I'm going to start with just some, oh, some plain white here. I might do a white kitty. It might get some black spots by the end like my own cat. Hmm. I'm just going to use the sponge brush. I'm trying to decide which I'm going to like better. So I'm just going to put a little bit of paint on here. I'm not going to make you watch me paint the whole time because that would be really boring to watch paint dry. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, but I am going to sneak some paint on the ears, and at least this front side, so you can kind of see at least the shape I was talking about. And I just freehanded it. Um, if you are a little bit more particular and don't trust yourself to freeform draw something, you could certainly um, print a pattern off the old internet, you know, uh, or draw something on a piece of paper till you like it. If you want something symmetrical, you can always fold paper in half and draw it on one side and cut it out. And then you'll have it on both both sides a little bit more evenly. Because I did my um, drawing so faintly with the wipe off pens, not even having to really worry about covering up anything. If you're really careful, you can stick your hand inside your project while you are putting, you know, painting. Kind of let you turn it and keep your hand off of it at the same time. All right. So really roughly, there's the start of my cat. You can kind of see this shape starting to form. He's got his little tail that's going to be popping up in the back here. And then his little ears in the front. All right. So that's paint a coat one. I'm going to give it a few minutes to dry. I'm going to add another coat and then we'll come back and do some more together. And I'll show you how we can finish it up. All right. So you can kind of see we've got um, the paint started. We've got um, currently two coats. I might do a third coat on our planters. They're starting to show up a little bit more. There we go. Put my hand on it. There's the cat's tail. Let's see if I can turn it. Mm -mm -mm. There's ears, at least one. You can see one ear. The other one's on the other side. But there's two, I swear. Two cat ears. And, of course, in the back, we've got our little dinosaur starting to take color, too. Our little purple dinosaur. Okay. And a trick for painting the feet, um, you can use another two-liter bottle or, like, a mason jar or some container. Um that has a little bit of height on it. And you can take your um, planter that you're painting and turn it upside down. Okay, you will want it kind of tall if you have any um, tails or long necks or things like that, just so that they're not touching the table. And then you can paint the bottom of it. And you can do two coats there as well. And that will uh, give it a finished look, making the whole thing look painted. Um, some people mentioned, well, you can try to paint inside well, 
you might want to avoid that because once you get dirt and water in there, you know, it's just going to start pulling the paint off the plastic um, and you, you won't see it very much anyway. So I wouldn't worry about painting the inside unless it's a piece that's standing um, upright like this neck or, or the tail on our white cap. All right, so that's where we're going to leave it for right now. We're going to let this dry. Um, let it dry thoroughly, I would suggest, before you do any additions and embellishments. Just because you don't want, you know, paint colors to mix, and you certainly don't want that Sharpie get gummed up with wet paint. Or, uh, you know, if you're at gluing things on, you want to make sure it's nice and dry before you start something else in the next step of, of decorating your creatures. All right, so we're back and I am just going to put some finishing touches on our cat here that I know is still drawing. So I think we're just going to have to let him finish up. I'm going to take a little pink, a little white. My pink's a little too pink, I think, for, for what I want to do here. So I'm going to kind of, kind of create my own shade of pink and uh, take this one down a few notches. There we go. So I'm just going to come back. And again, you can do this with a Sharpie if you wish. And I'm just going to do this pretty quick so you can get the idea. And of course, you can spend as much time painting your details as you want. So I did a couple of triangles for ears and I'm going to do an upside down triangle here for our little kitty nose. Almost looks like a little bit like a heart, and I kind of like it that way. All righty. Right, and I'm going to kind of try to eyeball this here. Looks pretty good to me. That looks like my Sharpie is trying to stick a little bit. Might need a new Sharpie. Alrighty, so here's a real quick take on my cat face. There it is. And as I said, you know, you could certainly play with this a little bit more. And we could add a collar. You could certainly paint one on, or I thought it might be cute if we added a little ribbon. Boop, boop, boop. You know, make it look like it's wearing a collar. We could certainly do that. Or you could paint something on as well. So that is our thought process for your planner. I hope you guys enjoy this project and make it your own and have a lot of fun creating a fun little creature or just a beautiful planter for your next gardening project. And... Uh, if you do the project, you know, we would love to see the end results because we like to see what you guys are up to, even if we aren't meeting together. There we go. So there we go. Oh, I've got it twisted. Why didn't you tell me? There we <laughs> Trying to hold it on without gluing it on. Of course, you would glue this on. I'm just trying it out for size. There you go. There's our little kitty cat planner. 
plastic ready for soil, ready for a plant, ready to strut its stuff. All right, guys, you guys have a great afternoon, and uh, stay tuned if you want to watch a bonus video for a self-watering planter. Bye-bye. Now we're going to do our little bonus. We're going to talk about turning a um, <laughs> two-liter bottle into a self-watering planter. So here we have our two-liter bottle. I don't know if you can see it. I love how clear things just don't show up on camera very well. And what I get did again is, of course, cut it in half. So break out those handy-dandy scissors again. And uh, this time you can certainly crimp a little bit of the side. You're not doing necessarily a decorative edge you're just kind of in a kind of a straight cut don't be a perfection about it um it's okay if it's a little wonky you'll be just fine um and so this one i've already cut into two pieces they're not perfectly even and that's okay i wanted to give a little bit deeper um base for the plant to be planted in so you can even go a little bit taller if you wanted to on the section that will be the planter. So the spout end. So you could come down and do, you know, four or five inches of, off the base. And the rest could be what you plan in. Or you can do half and half and that's all right too. Once you got them cut in half, you got your two pieces. So the, pa the bottom, the base, is going to be where the water will go. And the section that's got the spout is going to be what you eventually put some um, organic material in for your planter. Now, if you've got a mask that's a little defunct, had a problem, if you've got a cotton mask, I think these might be a great way to repurpose a mask that maybe has torn or broke or has just gotten dingy and funky and you're not going to use anymore. Don't throw it out. Find a new way to use it. And I think this is a perfect project for that. So this one is a cotton mask. So I am just going to give it a few snips here. And if you don't have a cotton mask, this works great for mismatched socks, um, big thick piece of cording. There's all kinds of things you use. You just want it to be cotton because it's absorbent. So I kind of cut it so the little strap is off. There we go. Haha. -ha. So I pulled it through, as you can see. And I'm going to kind of fold up and bunch up this end. And I'm going to kind of stick it back over that hole just a little bit. Just want to make sure that when I put potting soil, uh, in this top portion that this fabric is going to kind of block that hole so it doesn't just drip through leak through to the bottom. Where's that? And so then what we want to do is we want to put, I'm going to go ahead and put some water in our base here. And this portion dangling down is going to go right in there. And just like an old uh, oil lamp, the water is going to absorb onto the cotton material and it's going to get wicked up into the base here. And it will continuously bring water to the potting mix that our plant will be in. So after you get that base made and everything inverted, you can put your potting soil, plant your seeds, plant your flower, whatever it is that you're trying to grow. Obviously, it's not going to be a plant that needs a deep root system. It's only this big. But you can grow a head of lettuce. You could maybe try a bell pepper. There's all sorts of little plants and flowers you could do in one of these little self-watering containers. It's also a great place to start your seeds. So you could use it um, to start a couple of different seeds, and then you can transfer those seedlings to your garden when they get bigger. Uh, and of course, you can always water from the top. Any excess water 
will drip down to the bottom where it will just hang out until your soil dries out enough to um, start sucking up more moisture. So you don't need to worry about lifting this up and taking it off every time and just adding water to the bottom. You can if you've got a very finicky flower or plant or something and, and they don't like being watered from above. They're, those do exist. So there you go. One more idea for repurposing a water bottle and use it for a gardening tool. The self-watering planter. And of course, just like our previous project, you could certainly you don't have to leave it plain and boring. You could paint this up and have a lot of fun with it. You could even put little labels on what uh, you were growing or maybe your plant's name if it was uh, a flower that you were keeping for a long time. All right, you guys, have a great Earth Day. Uh, do something good for yourself, for the planet, and get those fingernails a little dirty and play in the dirt a little bit. From the Lebanon Senior Center, we'll see you next time.